Hello YouTubers, it's Hannah again. I know, already back. Um, I wanted to touch on different things in this video. One would be, um, leaving treatment. I know, there, there are so many of you who have gone treatment and left it before, but then there are a lot of you who have not gone to treatment, and so do not, or about to, who are about to go to treatment, who, um, don't know what to expect when you leave treatment. Okay, um, I don't know that many of you are actually in treatment and watching this now. I don't know all the rules in the different places. I just know that I wouldn't have been able to. Um, okay. So when you leave treatment, you're either leaving it in a, I hate treatment and I never want to come back again, and that pushes you, or you're leaving treatment saying, oh, I love treatment, and I my secret, my little, my dark secret is that I want to go back because it's a safe, safe place. You don't have to be those two things, but I found that those were the two things that I felt, um, on different times in different treatment times. Um, what I found helpful through that, um, uh, let me just, you know, go straight into it. The first time I left treatment, I was feeling fantastic. I thought that nothing could ever be wrong again and life would just be one big treatment stay. Mind you, not everyone's experience in treatment is glorious, um, so that might not make sense to some, but to others it will. Um, I f was walking on clouds, I felt so good about myself, and it was fantastic. And then I got home and I just crashed and burned. Everyone told me in treatment, as I was leaving, that it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be smooth sailing. Yeah. Come on, think about this. And, you know, I, I heard it, but I didn't hear it. And so, it was, you know, I crashed and burned. And when I did, I did. It was huge. But when I left, I had a lot of, um, I missed it. Oh, how many of you missed treatment? the people you meet in tr treatment, the safety you feel in treatment, and I, that is the ice cream truck driving me. Do you hear it? Sorry. Um, it's so annoying, the, the milk, the, the music. Anyway, um, I know that when I left, it was just so difficult because I wasn't in that safe environment anymore, and I, I wanted to be back there so badly because I knew that while I was there, there were people who were taking care of me, people who were telling me what to do. Mind you, I'm not the kind of person who likes to be told what to do, but I don't know how, how to phrase it, but it, it's just um, comforting. It's like all those staff members are your friends or your parent or um, just this person you look up to and you feel safe with. But the I started to make a um, journal of all my treatment cards and all my stuff. This is what it looks like. I was actually in the hospital when I made this. So. See? And um, at first I thought that it was going to, my eating disorder voice was really, really talking when I was making it. And I thought that I'd keep all my really, um, unfortunate pictures in and etc. But then when I left treatment the second time, I left it um, very, very depressed and um, oh, it was such a dark time. But I, months after leaving, I started using this as a place to um, bring back all that hurt and put it into this journal. and. Um, and then I was able to let go of the hurt, or start to let go of the hurt, and to take on everything that was good about treatment, um, and ev everything that I could bring into this, this little journaling notebook photo thing, and then I could put it all there, and I wouldn't have to think about it 24-7, the good or the bad of treatment. It's very difficult. I know. Do, do y'all feel that way that, you know, you, you come home from treatment and all you can think about constantly is treatment? It's, you, it's, it's almost the eating disorder uses it 
or for me it did, the eating disorder really used my, me wanting to go back to that safe place um, to get me really sick again. So this is, this is my journal, and I don't really know what I have, oh, oh no, See? That has my dates at Carolina. I even have hospital bands. Do you see that? It's ridiculous. It's not ridiculous. I have a very important I'm sorry, I'm just rambling all over the place. But um so if if you think it would help, I think that I should make a journal to put you know, I also have a box. I have a box that I have all my papers like like this, I have my box open right now because I was talking to you. But, um, put all your treatment stuff in a box and put it in the back of your closet. And when you're having a hard day, bring it out. Be careful, though, because I know that for me, my eating disorder was bringing it out as much as it could because that was when I was sick. That was when people cared about me, you know, like they don't now. But, you know, that's how my mind was working at that time. And, I mean, I would keep photos from the hospital and different medication slips that they were giving me, like this, like that, and, um, pictures, <laughs> I'm not going to show the pictures, um, and, oh, look, and it's my discharge from Carolina House. Anyway, so I, I find it helpful for letting go of the eating disorder if I can have a box or uh, an album that I can put all the stuff in it and put it somewhere that I can't see. And um, when I feel that I can look at it, I do open it and, and look through it. I have, again, I don't know about any of you, but I have a real difficult, a real difficult, real difficult time with um, looking and not feeling so sentimental or nostalgic towards it. And I know that there are members in, in my family who thought that, I don't know for sure, but I feel that that's true, and um, that they could not understand why I was so, um, I I'll say it, obsessed, so obsessed with treatment and my treatment, my treatment. Um, and it, I, it's hard for me to explain it. I know that it was a lot to do with the eating disorder, having me fixate on the treatment. Um, but there you go. What, what are you going to say? Um, so if, if you think that it will help, uh, perhaps you do, might, should try putting all your stuff in a box and putting it away. I know for me that I got really, really angry and tired of hearing about all these recovery things and the recovery websites and even the recovery videos on YouTube became too much to watch because I was at this point where I was just like, I don't even want to believe that I had that issue. I still have issue, that issue. Um, I still deal with a lot of the eating disorder um, thoughts and sometimes symptoms. And I, I, at that point, I just kind of wanted to ignore it. I didn't want to think about it because if I thought about it, then I had to think about recovery and where I was in my own recovery. And it would mean that I'd have to take responsibility. And at that time, I just wasn't ready to take responsibility for my actions or for my recovery plan or anything like that. So, um, again, for like the 50th time, if you think it will help, uh, go ahead and make a recovery box or a recovery album. I actually have one I made for drama. This is, it was 251 days of um, non-purging. Actually, right after I made this, I flipped. But, um, and I have uh, the scale. Man, I beat the shit out of that thing. Um, but yeah, so I have part of that in there. And Garrison Keillor, too, so you don't put right there. Um, and other things. But, um, okay. Well, that was rambled enough, so, uh, 
I'll let y'all go and um watch some exciting YouTube videos. But um hope this helped in some form. Toodle.